Where are we? Record Fair in Southampton. Emmy, have you been to Record Fair before? A couple with you, but not to this one. I've actually been allowed to come this time. Yeah, so where are we? Uh, we're in Southampton at the 1865. Now, what are you looking for at the Record Fair? Ooh, Betty Davis. That'd be cool. Best press. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. No, that's not gonna happen. But we're, we're, we're on the hunt. All right, you ready then? Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Martin's Vinyl. It's that time of year again where everyone's getting involved on the vinyl tag. If you're unfamiliar with this process, it's a simple idea. 20 questions have been put forward to the vinyl community and all you've got to do is answer for a record. It's that simple idea. Um, it is great, uh, the vinyl tag at the start of the year. Um, it's a great way to discover new channels that you haven't already discovered and it's also a great platform for anyone thinking of joining the vinyl community to introduce yourself. So if you've been thinking about doing it, this is a great platform for you guys to do it. So get involved. Um, but before I get started, you, you saw some clips at the start of this video of me doing some record hunting with my wife. I just recently did a video of my best finds of 2023. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. Uh, I found some really good stuff. But um, I really wanted to showcase some new records for all of you. So uh, I was quickly... Uh, hunting for some more records and my wife came along with me but um she got bored very quickly I, I think it was about five minutes and she uh plonked herself up at the bar but anyway I had a great time but I've got some exciting news in a couple of months time in March me and my wife will be going to New York and uh we, we will be exploring the city but um I will be hitting every record store I can so I'll be taking a lot of footage with me and a lot of money with me because I want to buy a lot of records while I'm out there. So if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss all the footage and all the records I'm going to bring back with me. So don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, let's do it. Let's answer these questions. All right, question number one. Here we go. Favourite record you purchased in 2023? Um... As I previously said, I did a video saying showing my best finds of 2023, but I managed to find this uh, record before the year was up. And the record I found, which I've been wanting for over a decade, I've been, it's taken me a long, long time to find this one, and that is Taj Mahal's debut album. This is the first UK press on the Direction label. I've been wanting this record forever. I know I've been watching it forever because I first discovered uh, Taj Mahal when my wife was very heavily pregnant with my daughter Bethany and um, I was still listening to uh, uh, Taj Mahal um, when she was born so every time I listen to Taj Mahal it, it makes me think of my daughter that's my personal connection with it but regardless of my personal uh, connection it's a fantastic uh, blues album for me this is a uh, one of the best blues albums of all time it's definitely one of the best debut albums of all time. Uh, if you don't know Taj Mahal, he's an American blues musician. He uses lots of different influences from around the globe for his music. He, he inspired others with their work. He inspired uh, the Allman Brothers recording with their albums as well. Um, but for some reason, this record has just been eluding me and avoiding me. I can never find it in the wild. And I did manage to find one or two copies, but they were in such bad condition I didn't bring it home. It's not an expensive record. You could get a good clean copy for around the £30 mark. But I just can never find it. But I finally did find it this year. So very, very happy. Very glad to finally have this in my collection now. Yes. Question number two. The last purchase of 2023. I saw a band. <laughs> Um, I 
don't listen to a lot of new music. I like my old music. There's too much good stuff in the past. And uh, I don't get a lot of time to listen to new music. But the guys were signing records before the gig itself. And I did manage to grab a signed copy whilst I was there. So happy days for me. I do like Rival Sons. I've heard their previous stuff. I don't own any of their other stuff. This is my first record by Rival Sons. But if you like their previous albums, then you'll definitely like this one. Question number three. Two albums by a band or singer in the same year. All right, gone with these two albums because I don't think they get enough love or enough recognition. Uh, I've gone with Captain Beefheart and his Magic Band. This is uh, Unconditionally Guaranteed from 1974. And this is the follow-up album released in the same year. Blue Jeans and Moonbeans. Um, interesting fact about these albums is that uh, after recording this one, his Magic Band quit immediately after recording the album. They weren't making enough money. Uh, they hated working with Captain Beefheart. He was extremely difficult through the recording process. And um, they just also didn't like the music they were making. Beefheart himself disowned both these albums um, and told fans to, to take them back and get a refund. Despite his own hatred for his, uh, his work, and they were both flops in the charts, they did go on to inspire other artists. Uh, Jack White really loves this album and he did cover uh, the title track, not title track, the first track, Party of Special Things to Do. Kate Bush considered the, both of these albums as masterpieces and they're some of her favourite work of all time. I really like these albums. I've said it before with other artists. Uh, when they have really early success and decide to do something a bit different, fans are very quickly to disown it. At the time, but when you're an outsider and you're looking in like myself, you can really appreciate what they are. And what they are, it's just some really good, easy listening albums. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Captain Beefheart, these is great starters for you. And his debut album, uh, Safe as Milk, is a must listen. That one, that one's fantastic. But some of his other work, like Trap Mask Replica, can be very difficult listening for new listeners. Okay, question number four if you could only listen to music from one decade, which decade would you choose? hate this question. I really hate this question because I can't pick. I love my old music, I love my old records, and I love the 60s, I love the 70s. If I could, if I could pick 10 years, it would be 1965 to 74. For me, that is the best time for music. So much new artists, fantastic albums are made in that time. I can't do it. I can't pick. Even a gun to my head, I couldn't, I couldn't pick. Um, so I'm going to answer this question with another question and for me this is a very thought-provoking question especially uh to you guys as well in the vinyl community so please leave a comment what you guys think about this question i'm going to say with the vinyl community records are our choice of format to listen to music so my question is what is the best decade for the best sounding records we love records because they sound great but what decade sounds the best and why? Please leave a comment. From my experience, uh, my classic rock albums from the 60s don't sound as good as my classic rock albums from the 70s. I know there's a lot of different factors to get involved with, but for me, it's an interesting topic. All I can say is uh, my clean copies from the 60s, 70s sound so much better than anything new that's being made now. So please let me know what is the best decade with the best sounding records. Very interested to know. So let me know. Question number five. Show an artist or band from Manchester. I'm slightly cheating a little bit with this album, but I'm going to go with John Mayles, A Hard Road from 1967. John Mayo is from Macclesfield, uh, just south of Manchester. I think it's close enough uh, to count. Uh, this is a, a first UK mono press on the Decca label for all those record collectors out there. Um, this John Mayer and Bluesbreaker album features the great Peter Green on lead guitar and John McVie on bass, both of which go off to form uh, Fleetwood Mac. Um, but also on the drums, you've got Ainsley Dunbar, and he's worked with some of the greats. He's worked with uh, Jeff Beck and Frank Zappa, Journey, David Bowie. Struggy Otis, just to name a few, is a fantastic drummer. This is a blistering album. Um, 
For me, it beats its predecessor, the Beano album with Eric Clapton. Peter Green is one of my absolute favourite early guitarist players out there. He has his own track on here called Supernatural, and that is one of my favourite tracks by him. Macclesfield. That's, that's close enough to count. Question number six. Most listened to artist from 2023. For me, that would definitely be Nazareth. I got more uh, records by them than anyone else uh, last year. If you don't know who Nazareth are, they're uh, a Scottish blue rockers. Uh, which kind of dipped in and out of other musical genres. If you're fans of ACDC, then you'll definitely love Nazareth. Um, both lead singers, Brian Johnson from ACDC and Dan McCafferty, sound very, very similar. I've already shown this album. Uh, this is Hair the Dog from 1975. This is a first press on the Mincrest label. Quite hard one to find. This is Nazareth, um, Expect No Mercy from 1977. I've already shown this one. This is a promo copy. But I haven't shown you these ones. Now, this is Nazareth's debut album from 1971. This is a first press on the Pegasus label. Now, this one's a lot more harder to find and um, a lot more expensive, but I, I got a great deal on this one. And it's a very clean copy. It's got one of my favourite uh, tracks of theirs on this one. It's called Red Light Lady. It's a really good track. And I've also got Nazareth Naming City from 1979. And this is another promo copy. Um, this album has a much more heavier sound. And uh, an interesting fact about this one, when they toured with this album, they toured with Finn Lizzie at the same time. So yeah, Nazareth, brilliant band. Question seven, show seven seven inch records. I don't collect seven inch records, but uh, last year I did buy a couple. I haven't got many. I could show you seven, but most of my seven inches all came with a 12 inch LP. And I don't think that'd be very interesting to show you. But I will show you what I do have, which isn't a lot, but I don't want to show you nothing. I've got um, this one. This is BB King's. Better Not Look Down single, and I don't know if you can see it, but this is a promo copy of that single from 1979, so that's why I grabbed that one. I got this one, this is The Trogs, A Girl Like You. I really like that track, and I bought this LP, and this is the first press, and um, I've streamed this album before, and the track A Girl Like You is on it, so that's why I bought it, but when I bought the first press LP, I didn't realise it didn't have the track A Girl Like You on it. I had a, um, So I had to pick up the 7-inch of it as well, because that was released on this album later when they were on tour. So that's why I got that 7-inch. And the other 7-inch I got is The White Stripes' Hardest Button to Button. I'm a big White Stripes fan, and one of my favourite songs of theirs is St. Ides March. And um, they never released that on LP. The only way you can buy it on vinyl is with this single, and it's on the B-side. So that's why I picked that one up. Question eight. Who's coming to the party? You get to invite four musical guests to a dinner party. They can be alive or dead. Um, I've listened to a lot of uh, answers to this question. I'm going to go with a completely different direction for this. I'm going to go with um, Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love. See what that what happens there. And I'm also going to invite um, Marvin Gaye. I'm going to let him bring a plus one. I'm going to let him bring his dad so he's not alone. Question nine. We lost them in 2023. I'm going to go with Tina Turner. And the record I'm showing is Tina Turner Turns the Country On from 1974. Uh, massive uh, fan of Tina Turner. A uh, huge guilty pleasure for me. I've loved her since I was a kid and all the way to her last performance. She is an amazing entertainer. Uh, I'm showing this one because um, this one's slightly rarer for us in the UK. They never released this album here in the UK, only in the States and maybe a few other places, but not here in the, in the UK. So um, this one definitely needs a reissue for over here. Question 10. Imagine you can only listen to music from one country. What country would you choose? For me, I would choose USA, America. They gave birth to so many different genres. They gave birth to blues, soul, funk, psych. Yes, we have here in England some of the biggest icons of music. 
Beatles, Stones, Pink Floyd, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Queen, David Bowie. Yes, they're all great, but for me, there's just so much history over in the States. Um, and there's just so much to explore in America. There's so many underground and underappreciated artists and bands out there for me to explore. So if I could listen to any music from one more country from now on, it would be to be able to explore America a lot more. Question 11. Name three vinyl community channels you discovered in 2023. The first uh, channel I want to give a shout out to, uh, they don't need um, much recognition or because they're, they're becoming very popular very, very quickly. And that's the Vinyl Hunters, but I'm very much enjoying their videos. It's hosted by uh, Jake and his granddad, uh, Dave, and um, they just go out record hunting. They don't really say anything interesting really about the records that they're showing or trying to find, but it's just very entertaining to watch. Uh, the next channel I want to uh, give a shout out to is Glenn the Baker, a very new channel. And uh, he shows uh, old records, new records, uh, reissues, uh, records from around the world. Uh, very interesting to watch. And he does say uh, some interesting things about them. And the last uh, channel I want to give a shout out to is Trent Records. I discovered him in this year, but um, he has not really done that many videos this year. Only a small handful, but he... He likes very similar taste in music to me, but he does like jazz a bit more than I do. But he, um, like me, he really likes to find uh, those old first press records and he shows some killer stuff as well. So uh, very, very, very jealous of some of the finds that he gets for his collection. So check them all out. Question 12. Show a record I brought as a teenager. I'm afraid when I was a teenager, I was only collecting CDs. I wasn't collecting records at the time. But the CDs I did get were from this band, Creed. And I finally got um, the greatest hits on vinyl. I picked this one up in America when I went last time. This was at their Walmart. Walmart is an experience in itself. But uh, no, but I had the CDs when I was a teenager. Me and my brothers loved creed we listened to them all the time i had all their um cds i had uh my own prison uh, human clay and weathered they were constantly on in the house or in the car um so yeah pure nostalgia for me and another guilty pleasure that i'm showcasing question 13 show a soul or funk record well i'm going to show a funk record and you don't get any more funkier than these guys these are the funkadelics uh, this is uh, One Nation Under a Groove from 1978. I do have Maggot Brain up there. Pure funk, fantastic funk. Um, doesn't get any funkier, doesn't get any better. Uh, they got a slightly back, big back catalogue. Um, you can't go wrong with any of them. They all got great cover art. Uh, unfortunately, though, this one doesn't have the, the guitarist Eddie Hazel in it, but still a really good funky record. Question 14. Share a record you think everyone has and then a record you think no one has. All right, the record um, I'm going to show you. This is a pre-warning. Before I, This is a very Marmite band. You either love them or you hate them. So uh, please wait till I get to the end of the question before you decide to turn, turn it off. But, um, okay, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. I'm going to do it. But stick with me because I've got a clever twist on it. So you, you ready? This is Dire Straits Making Movies from 1980. I've got a small guilty pleasure for Dire Straits purely because I used to work for the bass guitarist, John Ilsley. Uh, John Ilsley has a uh, restaurant in the New Forest and I was the chef uh, for that restaurant. It was a, a, a shooting restaurant, so he would go out uh, shooting and he would bring back a lot of game for me to, uh, to, to cook and serve back to him and his uh, paying guests. So that's my small connection to, to John Nilsley. Um But the reason I'm going to show you this, because I think everyone has this, you've definitely heard of this album, but the reason I'm doing this, because the record that no one has, which I'm going to show you now, is this one. For me, as a record collector, if I'm going to pick up a classic like this, it's got to be something unique or different about it. And the reason why this one is unique and different is because this one came, comes on a vertigo swell. First normal UK presses came, they do come on the Vertigo label, but they come on the orange yellow label. But this one came on the 
iconic vertigo swirl and now you can only get these ones in a few selected countries you can get the copies of these in um malaysia and singapore for example so that's why it's unique and that's why i picked it up otherwise i wouldn't pick it up so that's a record i think everyone has and a record i think no one has let me know if you do have a, this pressing because it'll be uh, quite good all right that's that Question 15, a female artist she brought in 2023. I'm going with Yvonne Fair with the album The Bitch Is Black from 1975. This is actually my wife's record. Um, best known for her track, It Should Have Been Me. When uh, the wife is playing that, we all do get a bit of a show, a bit of a performance uh, when that track comes on. If you don't know who y uh, Yvonne Fair is, she's a fantastic uh, soul funk singer. She started out with uh, the Chantels and uh, she joined James Brown's band and then went solo and was the opening act of The Temptations, The Jackson 5, Marvin Gaye and Stevie Wonder. She did a bunch of singles before uh, this record, but unfortunately this is her only LP. If you like Betty Davis, then you'll definitely love this album. Give it a listen if you, ha if you haven't. Question 16. Favourite video you made in 2023? I did make a lot of good uh, videos, what I think. A lot of views. Uh, but I didn't make many videos this year. Uh, I had a lot of personal problems this year, which I won't get into now. But one of my favourite videos that I made uh, last year in 2023 was one I made with my daughter, Bethany. I gave her her Holy Grail record, which was this one. It was a reaction video. She didn't know she was getting it. And her reaction was priceless when uh, she, she gave it. But uh, the record I gave her was this one. My brother thinks he's a banana from Barry Lewis Palaza. A fantastic, wonderfully weird album. Um, yes, it's made for kids, but uh, adults would definitely get a kick out of it. Um... If you don't know who he is, he was on the Juno soundtrack with All I Want Is You. Really wonderful album. And um, the annoying thing with that video that I made, um, no one watched it. So if you get the time, give it a watch because her reaction is really, really good. Oh, the next part of the question is uh, a favourite video you watched uh, from 2023. Um, I can't think of a... I've enjoyed a lot of videos, but I can't think of a one that was like a favourite. I tell you what, the videos I do like watching, I do like watching vinyl fine videos. I'm not into the ranking videos. I don't care what your favourite Queen album is or your favourite Beatles album is. Um, I do like a vinyl finds because the main reason why I watch these uh, videos from the vinyl community is to discover different albums, different musicians, different uh, artists for me to explore. So that's the ones I do enjoy watching more than anything else all right let's move on question 17 show a 90s classic i'm going with neil young's ragged glory from 1990 this is a fantastic record uh from neil young with neil young i either love his w album his work or, or i hate it but this one for me is one of his best this is a lot more garage sounding um record he did with his band crazy horse a lot more different to his folk country acoustic sounds that he's done before. Uh, the only one album that can top it for me from this one is uh, Mirable, which is a very hard, rare record to find. But this is a fantastic album. Question 18. Walk into the cover. If there was a cover art on a, an album, what cover art would you want to walk into? For me, I don't have the record. I really want the record, but I don't have it yet, yet. But the record cover I really want to walk into is uh, Jimi Hendrix's uh, Electric Ladyland from 1968. I know Glenn the Baker uh, put this as his answer when he did it. Um, maybe we can do it together, Glenn. Um, maybe we can tag team this because there's a lot of them. But you're a baker. I'm a chef. So um, if, we, if we don't get lucky, maybe we can make them something. Either way, we're going to put something in them. Question 19, feels like a greatest hits. I'm going with The Doors, LA Woman. I picked this one up recently. Um, this is one of my favourite albums of all time. I've been wanting it on the vinyl forever, but uh, to get a good clean copy in my price range has been very difficult. I managed to find this one at a charity shop at a steal of a deal. Um, this is the first UK press on the Electra label with the yellow slide-in window there. Fantastic album. This is one of, 
yes, I've only just got on vinyl now, but I've had it on CD and I've streamed it. I don't think the time I don't listen to this album, for me, it's uh, one of my favourites. Uh, so that's why it feels like a greatest hit. It does have a lot of their hits on here, but I've listened to it so many times that it feels like a greatest hit. Brilliant uh, album. Right, last question. Question 20. It turns 50. So uh, a record from 1974. Um, loads of great stuff came from 1974, but I'm going to go with this one. This is Geordie. Don't be fooled by the name. The uh, reason I want to show this one is because if you haven't heard of Geordie, they're a great blues rock band. But this guy right here is Brian Johnson from ACDC. This is the band he was in before he joined ACDC. So that's my album from 1974. Right, that's it. That's my vinyl tag done of 2024. Thank you very much if you watched it to the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I don't want you to miss my video I'm going to make when I go to New York. Because I think that's going to be some really good stuff you guys are going to enjoy. And also, leave me a comment. Talk to me. If you've got a new channel, you've posted a video, just let me know in the comment section so I can watch it. Uh, I have found a lot of new channels already, but YouTube's algorithm sucks. So just leave me a comment so I can check out your video. All right. Talk to you all very soon. Thank you.